Hello class. In this lesson, we're going to be reviewing the property of scale drawings and also learning how to make them. So a common place that you see scale drawings is on a phone or a tablet. Right? You can pinch uh, the screen a certain way so that it either enlarges the picture or shrinks it. And so the idea here is how does it know exactly how much to shrink it, how much to enlarge it? So we're going to learn about that in this lesson. And it's very similar to what the, uh, the phone or the tablet does. So here's a bicycle. Which of these is a well-scaled image of the original and why? Well, it looks like the third one's the well-scaled one because it's in proportion to the original. Proportion's important. The other ones, the first one looks like it's been squished vertically. This one looks like it's been uh, squished horizontally. So this one, however, the wheels still look like circles, and it's in a nice proportion. So to, re to recap, uh, you've learned about scale factors in the past. Uh, it's a ratio of the length of any side in the scale drawing to the corresponding length in the original drawing. And if the scale factor is bigger than 1, we usually use letter, letter R for scale factors, that means that you enlarged the original picture. And if it's between 0 and 1, that means that you reduced it, you shrunk it. So how do we actually perform one? Well, here we have a triangle. We want to do a scale drawing with a scale factor of r equal to 2. So we know since it's bigger than 1, the scale factor, that we're going to enlarge it. And here's one way to do that. If we're going to draw on top of our original figure, we can extend one of the sides. So let's extend AB. I'm going to draw this ray, ray AB. And now if you take the compass and you measure the distance from A to B, You can mark that off. You want to copy that distance so you can double it. So put the pivot on B and draw an arc. So that's going to be the location of B prime. And we can repeat the steps for AC. So extend AC. Then you want to measure that distance. Okay, so there's from A to C. And then you want to Put your pivot on C and do the same thing. And so now if we connect these two points, here we have our scaled image. So the image here would be triangle A, B prime, C prime. Now you could also do this by copying, uh, copying an angle. So you, could, you don't have to draw on top of the original triangle. So if you draw a ray somewhere uh, you know, away from the original figure, you can still find the length of A prime, B prime the same way, but to figure out where you're going to go to find C prime, you have to copy the angle. So you really have to apply side angle size so that you make sure that you're still going in the same direction to find C prime. But it's the same idea, all you got to do is copy the angle. So why are both of these congruent triangles? Well, like we said before, uh, we know that we use side angle side to construct the second one. So in each case, since they're congruent triangles and we scaled both of them by a factor of 2, it doesn't change the, the final product. So the dimensions are the same no matter where we put it on the coordinate plane. So let's measure B, C, and B prime, C prime. What do we get? Well, we know that A, B, I'm sorry, A, a B prime is going to be double of A, B. And AC prime is going to be double AC, but does that hold for B prime C prime? Let's see. If we measure BC, we get five centimeters here. And if we measure C prime or B prime C prime, we get 10 centimeters. So yeah, looks like that property holds. And what do we notice about the angles? So if we measured, for example, uh, angle B and B prime. Let's see, B prime over here looks to be about 42 degrees. And B here also looks like 42 degrees. And it turns out if we measure C and C prime, we get 32 degrees for those. So the angles, their measurements stay the same when you do a scale image. So the properties we have are the corresponding angles are equal in measure. And the corresponding lengths are all in the same proportion. So since we doubled uh, use scale factor of 2, all of this proportion should be equal to 2. 
And so that constant that you get, that's always going to be your scale factor. And if we had used a different angle to make our scale drawing, would it still be a proper scale drawing? Yeah, it doesn't matter where you do your scale drawing. All you have to talk about is the lengths and the angles. So you can do a scale drawing wherever you want on the plane. So going back to the bicycle. So why are these two not well scaled? Well, if you look at it, the distances are not proportional in the original image. And the corresponding angles also won't be equal because we didn't scale it correctly. So now we want to do a scale factor of 3. So it's the same idea. Here's a, an example where you use D. And you're extending, uh, I'm sorry, going from D through F to find out where uh, F prime is. And doing the same with E to find E prime. And so you'd use your compass to mark off twice this time. So you'd have from D to F, mark that with your compass, and then put your pivot on F, mark it again, and then put your pivot on this point to find out where F prime is. And same idea here. So these three segments will be congruent. And so what properties do we have? Well, if we measured it, and just by how we did the construction, we know that each side is three times the length of the corresponding side in the original. And all the angles will be uh, congruent. All the corresponding angles will be congruent. Now, we could have started at the other vertices. And note that we still get uh, scaled images that are correct. It's just they look a little bit different because of where the uh, side of the original triangle intersects it. But these triangles are all congruent. Now we want to do one with a scale factor of 1 half. Now we're doing reduction because the scale factor is between 0 and 1. And how can we figure out how to uh, cut the side in half? Well, we can use a perpendicular bisector. So for example, put your pivot on x and open it up more than halfway to z. And just draw your arc here. Put your pivot on Z without changing how large your compass is. Don't change the size. And do the same thing. And then, if we connect these, we know that the points where it intersects is going to be the midpoint, because that's a perpendicular bisector. And then we're going to repeat those steps for the other side. And we end up with a picture that looks like this. So you connect those midpoints that you find. And now we have x prime, or y prime, z prime, is a reduction. That's the reduction of uh, what we had x, y, z. Well, if we want to do one fourth, what would we do? Well, you know, if you bisect it once, that's going to be one half. So how do you get from one half to a fourth? Well, you just do another bisector. But now you bisect that half that you had. So it looks something like this. So you do your perpendicular bisector to figure out your midpoint. But then going from Q to the midpoint, you got to do the same thing to find out where R prime is. And you repeat those steps to find out where P prime is on the other side. What properties do we have? We know that those sides are in proportion. Right? So Q R prime is 1 quarter of Q R. And QP prime is 1 quarter of QP. And all the corresponding angles are congruent. So angle P, R, I'm sorry, P prime, R prime, Q is congruent to angle P, R, Q. And angle Q, P prime, R prime is congruent to angle Q, P, R. And finally, here we have a triangle. And we have one side of a scale drawing of it. So how can we figure out where the other pieces go. Well, so how can we draw, how can we figure out where B prime goes centrally? Well, we, we know we can measure the distance to find out what the, uh, what the scale factor is. But that's not going to help us because we don't know what direction we have to go in. So I think this will be nicer if we uh, copied the angle here. If we copied angle A to A prime and angle C over on C prime, we'd have something along the lines of angle side angle. So where these two rays intersect, we would have our third point. So for example, 
take your compass and put the pivot on A and open it up, up uh, not too big, not too small. Draw your circle, go over to A prime and do the same circle. And now we want to figure out how wide open the angle is. So pick pivot on one of those points of intersection and open it up to the other point of intersection. So I can get that. That's pretty good. All right, and I'll do that with blue. So I'm put our pivot over on A prime. I'm sorry, at this point of intersection. Now we draw a ray through from A prime through that point of intersection. We have congruent angles. So B, B prime has to be somewhere on this ray. And if we repeat those steps over at C prime, we get this figure. And so this point over here is B prime. And let's see, how can we figure out what the scale factor is? So now if we measure, let's see, AC is 3 centimeters, and let's see, A prime, C prime is 6 centimeters, so 6 divided by 3 is 2, so the scale factor is 2. And this little explanation here for what we did, it's one way to do it. So we copy those angles like we said. And by, when we measure it, it turns out that the other sides are also in the same proportion. So uh, C prime, B prime is twice CB. And uh, A prime, B prime is twice AB. And we can also double check that all the angles are congruent. You know that A and A prime are congruent, and C and C prime are congruent by how we constructed that. And by the third angle theorem that we learned, you know, if two of the angles are the same in the triangles, and the third angles must be congruent as well, or have the same measure, then you know B and B prime are also congruent. So all those properties hold. So finally, how does this go back to what we said for about the uh, scaled images on a phone or tablet. Well, if you have a point on your phone, and you think about it as a, a pixel on your picture, and you want to do, a say, a reduction. So if you have your fingers over where you see uh, T prime and I prime, I'm sorry, I misspoke. If you have your fingers over on T and I, OK? And then you want to zoom in, you would move your fingers away from each other to zoom in on the figure. And so uh, where P is is going to change based on how far you move your fingers. And it's going to be a scale image of that original triangle. So essentially, you start off with the triangle ITP, and you move your fingers, and you want to make triangle I prime, T prime, P prime. And that's a very similar process to what we just did in the previous construction. So then the uh, phone or tablet knows exactly where the pixel should be for P prime after you uh, zoom in. So in this lesson, we learned about the properties of scale drawings, and we learned how to make them. In particular, you know that correspondings are equal in measurement, and the corresponding lengths are proportional in measure. And you can put a scale drawing wherever you want on the plane, and still a correct scale drawing. Thanks for watching this video.